All right, so we're back again with another Ibuki Doji video. This time, thanks to Fate Shine Remnant's first DLC, where we have her in her ruler form. As a rogue servant, AKA a matchless servant, if you're not aware, she was summoned by Tsuchimi Kato Yasuhiro, the overseer of the Waxing Moon ritual to easily win the war. But Ibuki was too much for him, as Caster predicted, and went off to Japan until she was spotted by the boss aka Gilgamesh and found he got her drunk and then tried sealing her away until her magical energy would fade away making her a non-issue. Now this plan didn't work out because Caster and Shimikado found out about this and unsealed her. But because she was still doing her own thing at this point in time, as Caster predicted, Tsuchimi Kato kinda just gave up at this point in time. And because she wanted to participate in the tournament, pleading Gilgamesh to allow her to, she became a participant. With her run being different from all the other characters. In her case, she fought all the servants in pairs and gave specific comments to all of them, some of them more interesting than others, with her final opponent being Gilgamesh himself. After having won the tournament, being granted a wish, she actually steals it from Tsuchimi Kaido, even though she was the one who actually won the right to even have the wish, and decided to go on a tour and shopping spree around Japan. And even though she can shapeshift in this form, the image shows her in her more snakish one. But looking at the other stories, we see that she manifests Ayori's house watching Yari and Saber and will eventually decide to show herself and become one of the recruitable servants that they can pick from. Now even though they did meet her in the tournament, that was more like a dream to them and the other participants, thus they don't remember her. Her involvement in the other routes are fairly similar with some differences in the dialogue choices, so I'll tell you the ones that I found most interesting. Ibuki comments on how how well maintained and cared for Saber's sword is, which is actually the same sword she has, just in a different form as it takes with different users over time. Because that sword is also something that came from her father, Yamato Orochi, which she also sprung forth from. When she appears, Assassin already knows it's her, having encountered her in his myth. And because of their time together, him probably trying to act cool and not call her big sis, she insists that he does, and essentially bullies him into doing so. Overall, I think the dynamic was interesting in terms of the conversation and she got the most personal with him which was really nice. In the case of Ryder, they wanted to cut Ibuki's head off immediately because Ryder is a demon slayer and thus Ibuki being a demon is on the chopping block for them. Ibuki does in fact remember who Ryder actually is but does notice that they are slightly different, noticing the difference between Ushigozen and Inamoto no Raiko. Because she's so high energy, seeing Chimon as such low energy, she sees he's not enjoying the fight or the tournament and tries to make him relax and enjoy the fights, but he refuses to do so. The part I enjoyed about this was seeing their conflicting energies and seeing how Chimon is just so dark, broody, and revenge focused, as opposed to her more playful, energetic, high energy. And lastly, we'll talk about her interactions with Musashi who seems to have a very similar vibe to her, with both of them being very high energy, enjoying the moment, making it seem like these two would be really good friends if they had more time to interact. And finally, we have her abilities. In this form, she shows two particular abilities I think are worth mentioning. One being the ability to create illusions that can take the form of a person's grief and or regrets, and the ability to to boost the power of others. She uses the first one to do things like summon the same type of snakes assassin can. She even makes the great Orochi from on the 
in the story that poisoned Yori for both Saber and Yori to fight and so on. This actually makes every run different to a certain extent and if you've played the story of these characters, you might understand why they're fighting what they're fighting and what that can potentially say about their characters. She also alternatively powered up Saber who has the same sword as her, Rogue Berserker, and Ryder when interfering with the matches. And that's all we got for today. If you want to know more about some of these characters that I've covered, check the playlist.